79% of you clicked on this video just to go down in the comments and say that Wilhelm III becoming the German president is impossible, but you would be wrong. If you're wondering, Wilhelm III really had a chance at becoming the German president, so what if he succeeded? Does this mean that Germany doesn't start the Second World War and remains peaceful? Or does the Austrian mustache man start a civil war in the country? There is only one way to find out. And the ending is brutal. In the state of Weimar, Germany, there were only three presidential elections. The first one happened in 1919, after the war had ended. The second one in 1925, where Paul von Hindenburg was victorious. And the point of divergence for today, the 1932 election. Wilhelm III didn't participate in either elections, but I'll go over that shortly. What is important is that the Austrian mustache man got 96.77%, but Paul von Hindenburg got the majority, so he beat him and became the German president. The thing is that on the 30th of January 1933, Paul von Hindenburg appointed the Austrian mustache man as the chancellor, and after the death of Hindenburg in late 1934, the Austrian mustache man effectively had the undisputed control over Germany. This was far from guaranteed, and Wilhelm III could have participated in the 1932 election. Technically, he could have participated in any election, but his approval would be very low, especially in 1919. As for how Wilhelm III could have become president, let's go back in time to when the German Empire was defeated and his father, Wilhelm II, was forced to abdicate his titles. The German royal family fled to the Netherlands, where they were practically under house arrest. In late 1921, Gustav Strassemann, who would briefly become a German chancellor, visited the royal family, where Wilhelm III expressed his interests in returning to Germany as a regular citizen. In August 1923, when Gustav Strassemann became the German chancellor, he allowed Wilhelm III to return to Germany, but he made him promise to stay out of politics, to which he agreed. In June of 1927, there was a referendum in the Reichstag that wanted to seize the assets of the Hohenzollern family, basically the German royal family. This bill failed for several reasons, which enriched the German royal family. They got to keep their palaces in Berlin, Silesia and etc. Wilhelm III had met with the Austrian painter several times, which is an important fact. This is because both men liked each other. Here is a photo to prove my point. Wilhelm III joined Der Strachium Bund der Frontsoldaten, which translates to the Steel Helmet League of the Frontline Soldiers. This is an organization formed by the veteran soldiers of the Great War, who were closely affiliated with the monarchs of the German National People's Party. I couldn't read online as to why, but Wilhelm III never joined the Monarchist Party, but he did have affiliation with the Habsburg Front. This was a political alliance whose ideology was radical right-wing and their political ideology was anti-democratic. If it sounds a bit like ultranationalist Germany ruled by the Austrian painter, it's because it is. The Austrian Painters Party was member of this political coalition. Now the meat of the video. Wilhelm III was reportedly interested in the idea of running for Reich's president as the right-wing candidate against Paul von Hindenburg in 1932. Now why didn't he do it? Well, it is because of his father, who forbade him from acting on the idea. This is because Wilhelm II privately supported Paul von Hindenburg and his presidency. After Wilhelm III was not allowed to run for president, he supported the Austrian painter's rise to power, and there are many pictures of the two. If you would ask why would he support the Austrian painter, it's because he had mentioned something about restoring the monarchy. Wilhelm III would have become Kaiser and the Austrian painter and his party would run the country undemocratically. Funnily enough, after Wilhelm II passed away in 1941, many military officers were dissatisfied with the Austrian painter, so they wanted to replace him with Wilhelm III, but he declined. This is why they tried to put Erwin Rommel as the person who take over Germany, but he didn't want that, which resulted in his death. I have shared a lot of information and I bet that no matter what, you have learned something new. So let us make Wilhelm III become president. The approval of his father is actually important. You may be quick to suggest that Wilhelm III should act despite his father's disapproval, but this simply cannot happen. Surely Wilhelm III can run for president, but his father still had a lot of respect and influence over millions of people in Germany. If his father were to discredit him, which is a real possibility, Wilhelm III cannot win the elections in any way. What I would suggest is a bit unrealistic, but who cares? In June 1926, the Weimar Republic seizes all the assets of the German royal family. This way, Wilhelm III can promise to his father that all he wants is to bring justice and return these assets back to the Hohenzollern family. I hope this would be good enough to convince Wilhelm II to agree and allow his son to run for president. This is far from guaranteed to happen, 
But there really seems to be no other better choice. Unless we cause the death of Paul von Hindenburg two years earlier. Since Wilhelm III had good relations with the Austrian painter and the future German Führer, a coalition between the two is entirely possible. Wilhelm III would have influence over the monarchist party and the Austrian painter over the ultranationalist party. A coalition between the two would guarantee that Paul von Hindenburg gets defeated, as again the results were close between Hindenburg and the Austrian painter. Throwing Wilhelm III in the mix would for sure tip the scales away from Hindenburg. If you are asking why Wilhelm III doesn't run as an independent candidate, it's because he practically has no chance of victory. I would be deeply surprised if he would get double digits in terms of voting percentage. I think that at most he would get around 5%. After all, the Austrian painter did promise to him to return the monarchy, with Wilhelm III in charge. Ain't no way that the Austrian painter would just lie, am I right? Historically, Wilhelm III realized that the Austrian painter doesn't have the intentions and the relations between the two quickly soured. Wilhelm III realized that after the Night of the Long Knives, where a friend of Wilhelm III was murdered on the orders of the Austrian painter. This happened a month before the Austrian painter became the Führer of the German people. I have heard many people say that the Germans couldn't win the Second World War due to the ideology of the ruling German party. They wanted to destroy communism at all costs and gave up on developing their nuclear weapons, which were considered to be Jewish science, and killed millions of people during the wartime, which consumed a lot of resources. The Austrian painter also declared war on the United States and so on. In one sentence, I have heard a lot of people agree that if the Nazis weren't Nazis, they would win the Second World War. Now, with Wilhelm III in the picture, Germany really has a chance of victory, so let me explore that. Since there would be so many differences between the German president and the chancellor, hardly anything would get done in the country, due to the many disagreements. What both parties agreed on, however, is that they dislike communism and democracy. As a result, elections in Germany would quickly cease after Wilhelm III and the Austrian painter's coalition gets elected. Let me remind you that Wilhelm III did have some far-right political views and the German Nazi party also had far-right views. So why was there a divide between the two? To start off with, I would bet that they would disagree on the Jewish question and many things that the Austrian painter would propose. Wilhelm III would just keep asking the Austrian painter to pass a bill to restore the monarchy, but it would simply be delayed. If the Night of the Long Knife still happens without Wilhelm III's knowledge, which is a real possibility, a civil war in the country is really possible. Let us not forget that the military and the high command still didn't trust the Austrian painter and some wanted to get rid of him. This is why I opened a Wikipedia page regarding all failed assassination attempts and to my surprise there were many and I only knew two. For example, in the first one in 1932, the Austrian painter and several members of his staff fell ill after dining at the Kaiserhof Hotel. Poisoning was a suspect, but the Austrian painter was the least affected due to his vegetarian diet. In this attempt, the British military attaché in Berlin suggested that it might pay off to get rid of the Führer. His plan was to assassinate him with a sniper rifle as they had clear vision of his podium where he would be performing his speeches. This plan was turned down by his superiors and Lord Edward Halifax argued that the British have not reached that stage. I would go for this option in 1934, which would be two years after Wilhelm III would become president. It would benefit the scenario the most, as I predicted in this timeline, the Night of the Long Knives would still happen, just without the knowledge of Wilhelm III. Pepo Romer wanted revenge for the Night of the Long Knives and planned to assassinate the Austrian painter. This plan failed because the Gestapo found about his plans and turned him over before he had a concrete plan. This resulted in Beppo Romer being in prison for five years. This time, let's change that and Wilhelm III would make a mess in the Gestapo, so it wouldn't be that strong. The assassination of the Austrian painter might be successful, but whether it succeeds or not, it doesn't matter for this scenario. This is because getting rid of the Austrian painter doesn't automatically get rid of the ultranationalist party. If the Austrian painter gets assassinated, somebody else like Heinrich Himmler or Rudolf Hess would take over. Whether if there is a successful assassination attempt or not, there is going to be a huge divide between Wilhelm III and the ruling German party. I would say that this has to result in a civil war, as both sides would have massive support and are in conflict over key issues. Despite the ultranationalist party being more popular, the army would side with Wilhelm III, and this is the only thing that matters. The conflict would last only around a month, with the monarchists quickly coming out on top. The conflict would end in 1934, so the Kaiserreich would get restored in early 1935. I think that it's fair to say that the monarchists would secure more support, and many ultranationalist supporters would transition to the monarchist party. 
The Kaiser had similar ideology to the German Führer, just without all the unnecessary killings. This scenario actually becomes quite difficult to predict what would happen after that. Technically, Germany has a better chance of winning this conflict, but I don't think that Wilhelm III is capable of doing it. I may be wrong, but I assume that Wilhelm III would act like this. He would support Poland against the Soviet Union, and maybe get the Polish permission to annex the free city of Danzig. Wilhelm III would contain the Soviet Union at all costs, but wouldn't be willing to fight them, so the Baltics and Finland would be strengthened with German support. The main enemy of Wilhelm III would of course be France and Britain. This to me signals that Wilhelm III wouldn't go for the Austrian Anschluss, the Sudetenland and the rest of Czechoslovakia. These actions were characteristic to the Austrian painter and I doubt that Wilhelm III would copy them. The allies of France and Britain I think are less likely to do the appeasement strategy. Even the communist opposition in France, which was anti-war, would dislike the Kaiser. France might stand united against the German state, so Germany getting any free land I think is not possible. The Germans would also struggle to find allies, maybe they forced Mikolaj Horthy to pick a Habsburg to rule the Kingdom of Hungary, but even if this succeeds, Hungary would be the only ally of Wilhelm III. I think that here we are walked and cannot do too much with that scenario. Even if Wilhelm III were to invade France and have success due to the German army generals, Czechoslovakia might intervene. Wilhelm III winning any conflict would be too optimistic and even less likely. Germany in this alternate timeline would have suffered a civil war, so they would be weaker. While it would be cool for Wilhelm III to annex Austria and all of these lands, then invade Poland, this wouldn't happen. The Germans cannot pressure Czechoslovakia to give up the Sudetenland, where was the majority of their fortifications. This means that in a war between Germany and Czechoslovakia, the Czechoslovaks actually have a chance, and if France and Britain were to join, Germany would soon be defeated. Now, let me be real, Austria did want to join Germany. John Gunther in his book Inside Europe said this. In 1932, Austria was probably 80% pro Anschluss. This matters because in 1934, the Austrian painter tried to cool Austria and put Anton Rintelen in charge, who and his Christian Social Political Party was pro unification. Austria also had a brief civil war where democracy was disbanded and Austria became ruled by a dictatorship. Since the Austrian painter wouldn't exist to do this coup in Austria, the Austrian Chancellor Engelbert Dufus would still be in charge. He died historically when Germany attempted their coup in Austria, and this time this wouldn't happen. I think that there is literally 0% chance that Engelbert Dufus joins Germany, no matter what. I mentioned that the Austrians in 1932 were 80% pro unification, which is quite high. The next year, in 1932, there were only 60% pro unification. The reason for the decline was because the rise of power of the Austrian painter in Germany, who would later become the German Chancellor. This time it can be different, but this is really difficult to predict. If Wilhelm III somehow prevents the rise of the Fatherland Front in Austria, the Austrians would 100% volunteer to join the Germans. Germany doesn't even have to do anything, Austria would just want that, and the Allies cannot do anything about it. Historically, Austria wanted to be part of Germany ever since they lost the Great War, but when the ultranationalists came to power, support plummeted as they didn't want to be part of that Germany. Anyways, even if Germany is lucky and they get all of Austria for free, they wouldn't get the Sudetenland, so Czechoslovakia could defend themselves quite easily. I don't think that Czechoslovakia would join in a war to defend France, but they won't have favorable view of the Germans for sure. If Hungary becomes a German ally, then it's even worse and could make Czechoslovakia want to join the allies, as they would feel threatened, and for a good reason. Germany wouldn't invade Poland or Czechoslovakia, so the only option is to go to war with France and Britain, without gaining some free land and industry first. I don't want to leave you on a cliffhanger, but I really don't know how this situation could continue. Germany can invade France, do what the Germans did historically and go through the entirety of the Benelux, and somehow capitulate France, but I don't know how likely it is for more than his Germany to do that. I think that Wilhelm III would be a bit close-minded and would predict that another war would also mean trench warfare. He would still invest and develop tanks, as he saw that they turned the tides of the Great War. In 1936, Spain would have a civil war, but this time the nationalists of Francisco Franco won't be supported by Germany, or actually they might be. Wilhelm III can either support the far-right nationalists or the Carlist faction. This scenario is already built on too many assumptions and I don't like that, as we cannot realistically predict what a second world war would look like. We don't even know if Wilhelm III would ally with Benito Mussolini. This is why here I'll stop caring and go full on realistic mode. The other alternative is that I end the video right here and waste your time by leaving you with a cliffhanger. 
As a disclaimer, I won't be going down the realistic path anymore and would like to make the rest of the video a cool scenario. This is because I cannot continue the realism anymore. If you know what a second world war would look like in a realistic way, please comment down below. So, Germany would request that they get a Saarland, which would still be French in 1936. The French would of course refuse to do that and refuse to even do a referendum. The Saarland crisis would begin. Wilhelm III is unlikely to go as far as the Austrian painter in terms of bankrupting the country due to constant rearmament. If Wilhelm III gets Austria, which is not guaranteed, but I will include it anyway, he can argue to increase the army limit for Germany, as it now includes millions more people who need protection. The Allies and Think would refuse that and even threaten with war. Now, this is one option, and the other is that the Allies see Germany and Wilhelm III as a partner against communism. Wilhelm III would already prove himself as bastion against communism, because he will support Poland and their territorial integrity. This means that the Germans can befriend the Allies, but this is too out of character and I will dismiss it. So, Germany would invade France for whatever reason, maybe because of the Saarland crisis. Since the German army would be so limited in size, they can never hope to capitulate France. Reaching Paris is also out of the question, due to the Maginot Line. France can drive the Germans back, but the French would retreat behind the Maginot Line, because there it's safe. This would give the Germans time to mobilize, but they cannot hope to secure a victory, it would just make their war against the Allies more costly for both sides. The Soviet Union on the other hand wouldn't sit idle and I bet they would start going for Poland, Finland, Romania and the Baltics, while the Allies are busy dealing with the Germans. I don't know how many countries the Soviet Union can successfully invade in that time period, so my prediction would be this. The Allies by that time would push into Germany, with Wilhelm III being the post and quick peace treaty would be signed. There Germany will allow for France to annex the Saarland and would be forced to release Austria. Danzig would be occupied by Britain and wouldn't be returned to Poland. This is because if Poland were to get defeated by the Soviet Union, Danzig would become a Soviet city. Germany now has to join the Allies, with a democratic government being put in place or a British nobleman is put in charge over Germany. Either way it works. This time the Second World War can be caused by the Soviet Union. The Allies had just fought Germany, so they would need time to recover. This is why they would need to do the appeasement strategy on the Soviet Union. This would allow for them to take Bessarabia from Romania and a similar conference to that one in Munich would take place. But instead of Czechoslovak lands being given to Germany, Finnish lands would be given to the Soviet Union. The Finns would lose their most fortified positions on the Karelian Isthmus, which means that the Soviet Union would invade them later only to puppet them. When the Soviet Union goes to war with Poland, a massive conflict would start, but most likely it remains an European war. Japan would never seize French into China and get embargoed as a result of that, so they would continue fighting the Chinese. In this European war, the Soviet Union would be defeated, and the peace treaty would look something like this. While it's unrealistic, at least there is an answer given to the video's topic. Germany couldn't win the Second World War like that. The First World War, however, is a different story. There, Germany actually had a chance of winning. So, I challenge you to click on this interactive video where you can play as Germany and make them victorious. Good luck and I hope to see you there.